Okay, good evening, Hatfield. Welcome to the April 2nd, 2024 meeting of the Hatfield Select Board. I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, we did just return from an executive session. Um, and now we're just heading into the regular session. And as always, I'll open the meeting by reading our public participation policy. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the town of Hatfield. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings, but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, it doesn't look like we have anyone here um, for public forum. Does anyone have any announcements, Ed? No, I don't have any announcements today. No, I don't either. I can think of. Um, so we'll go right into our consent agenda, which would be the approval of the March 19th minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve March 19th meeting minutes. Well, I will second that under, we're, we're under March 19th, right? The meeting minutes? Yes. On um, line eight, uh, under post, after posted business, topic two, line eight, I think the, it should say, take ARPA funds to either raise or remove two receptacles above the new floor. And it should say mini splits. Mini not splits. Yes, yes. So mini those slip. are the only <laughs> two items I see that mini need to be addressed. Slip, slip. I'll Just probably an autocorrect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably an autocorrect. Yes, good catch, Ed. So. Okay, so a motion's been uh, made and second any further discussion. No. We'll approve them with those um, noted changes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It was just mini split. And oh, what was there another one? Yes. What was that? The other one was about the receptacles. She wants you to repeat that. Oh. Yeah, either uh, to uh, raise or remove. Oh, okay. To raise or remove to Above the new floor. Or move. Okay. Above. Okay. Right on time. You guys are good. Um, so our first um, topic in open session tonight, excuse me, is a meeting with our library trustees and library director um, regarding the sick leave policy. Did um, you want to come up to the microphone? Sure. Okay. You can bring up an extra chair if you want. <coughs> Welcome. Maybe just introduce yourselves so that everyone at home knows. I'm Dodie Gaudet. I am trustee chair. I'm Kathy Sheehan. I'm a trustee. I'm Eliza Langhans. I'm the library director. Welcome. Um, so I'll turn it over to you. You asked to be on the agenda about the um, part-time sick leave policy. Correct. Um, the state of Massachusetts does give part-time people sick, accrual sick time, and, uh, and municipalities are exempt from that, but we are requesting that the same law that applies to Mass the rest of Massachusetts also apply, at least to Hatfield, to the library. Uh, we're not talking a lot of money at all. We are talking... Um, people who are dependable and reliable and have given no indication that this would be abused whatsoever. If it were, um, we could deal with those people individually or Eliza would deal with those people individually. Um, it would be a, a really nice way to show these people that they are appreciated, they work hard, it would give them more incentive to stay at the library. Um, turnover can be an issue, although it has not been a really terrible issue, but it would be one more reason to keep good people at their job for which they have been trained. So and also to, be, to clarify, this would only apply to people with set schedules. So like correct. you work every Thursday. Okay. So Eliza, can you explain just for the benefit of townspeople how it works now and what you're proposing? 
So right now, anybody over 20 hours gets personal vacation and sick time. And we're just proposing the Massachusetts standard, which is one accrued sick hour for every 30 hours of work, be applied to people who work less than 20 hours. So it would be applied um, to about 36 staffing hours a week because only about half of our staffing hours are worked for people by people who work less than 20 hours. Sorry, that's a lot of numbers. But it actually wouldn't, even if every single person used the maximum amount and, I mean, lots of times if someone calls out at the last minute, we sort of, we don't actually get pay for extra staff. We just kind of shift things around. But the most it would cost us is like $1,000. And that's out of your line that exists because it just it, right. We it, wouldn't be asking you for that money because we also supplement our salaries budget with the state aid money that comes from um, that comes from being certified. And it by would the just state. be they'd be paying being paid for hours they were scheduled to work. They just weren't oh, there. Yeah, right. Correct. It would only be for already. Like so, it would be again someone who works six hours every Thursday. Um, so. It, you would sort of over the course of the year, you would accrue, like if you worked one day a week, you would really only accrue basically the equivalent of one day a year. It's not very much. And you would be able to just have that to, to use as a sick day if you needed it. Did you have any input on this in terms um, of how we, it affects we have our policy? I've, I've looked at what other communities are, are doing. Most of the communities um, do compensate um, or I say, it, uh, yeah, a grant sick time it for 20 hours or more. Yes. But there are a few. Northampton is one. They're a union, though. The libraries are it's a mostly, union. mostly, right now, there's a few smaller communities, like Leverett just recently um, added a policy like this. Um, but mostly, it's the slightly larger unionized towns like Northampton and Amherst. Um, well, since it's the first time I'm hearing it, I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. Yeah. I'm just saying... We'd like. I had, I'd like time to look into this yeah. because this doesn't just affect the library. This will affect everybody right. that's part time right. for the town. Exactly. So we can't make a policy that. change for just one department. Right. It would have to be town wide. So yeah. before I was ready to make a decision on this, I'd have to find out how many employees are affected, yeah. how our budgets affected, and how does it and all that apply. So. Right. Well, and I think that's why we came tonight. We wanted to start the discussion. Yeah. Right. Um, over the year, we've been looking at all our policies and we've been looking at personnel and trying to update things. And one of the things that was glaring was the fact that those part-time employees had no sick time. And they're, you all know that they're mm -hmm. the ones that are working three jobs um, and that one paycheck away from whatever. So, you know, we just wanted to keep the good people that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're very lucky with that. The employees that we do have working less than 20 hours is very few. Yeah. It would be good to know what mm -hmm. departments they're in. Mm -hmm. And in other words, what departments might be affected. Mm -hmm. And um, because this wouldn't affect, would it affect seasonal? They no. work more than, they, they work more than um, 20 hours a week. I'm pretty sure. Or interrupt the bills. seasonal. The bills. seasonal, yeah, they work. Okay. Generally, yes, they okay. work. Right, that's right, that's right. Okay. okay. But the people in the library are permanent. Right, no, no, I understand. People. I'm just, yeah. think, I'm asking True. in terms of other departments right. that might be affected. Yeah. yeah. We didn't really have access to that information, so we couldn't like look at it in advance, but right. my no, impression I'm, is that it's not a lot of people. Right. Yeah. But it's a good point, Ed. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we, we should do our due diligence with mm -hmm. that because if we make a, a, a policy that changes things, we need to know really what the implications are. So um, maybe for our next meeting, Marlene, we could have- Oh yes, absolutely. Maybe a little information about what other departments, because I don't know what, the, would the school have to up, go by this policy or do they have their own? The HR policies are separate from the school. Okay, so it would be just the town side employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, not the school district. Right, correct. I, would it, would the council on aging maybe be affected, like drivers? Um, they could, they could. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rec well, well. Rec department at all? Uh, the people they employ in the summer. The summer camp. Affected? 
That's seasonal though, right? That is seasonal. That's season, yeah. Not permanent. The summer yeah. camp runs, I think, for yeah. so so it wouldn't affect seasonal, months. right? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Okay. Um, COA drivers. Um, I think the senior driver probably works twenty hours, Turkey at least twenty and hours. Firefighters that are sometimes part time. How does that affect? But they're them? per diem. Yeah. Mm. We we need to do a little. Yeah. 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 Per yeah. diem. I hadn't yeah. even thought about the per diem fire. Yeah. yeah. So we we do need to really think about the mm -hmm. ramifications. Of, I get, totally get why you're asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a reasonable request, but we just have to. Sure. Mm -hmm. Make sure that yeah. if we implement it, that there aren't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things that sound easy aren't aren't that easy. Right. Yeah. yeah. That should be like our I motto said, that's here. Why we to bring it to you now. Honestly, you know, I, so we could have, yeah. so have the discussion. Yeah. I was looking at policies for a lot of different libraries, and it's it's very confusing to try to figure out like what this applies to and what right. exactly it means. So, right. um, but yeah, any information you need from us, just just let us know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate you bringing the matter forward, and we'll we'll see what we can do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Eric, how are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Um, good to see you too, Dave. Uh, we're ready for you. Ready. We're right on. We're uh, um, moving on to topic three here. <coughs> um, which is to meet with our uh, engineers about the wastewater quickly. treatment plant um, upgrade bids, um, as well as the sewer assessment management plan planning project. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, just quick question. Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Marlene, did the, does the board have a copy of the memo that we sent out? Couple of days ago, that two page memo. Um, yes, they so, do. Yes, okay. right so you here. You have that in your handout. Okay. I thought so, you had something right. else. No, there. I brought copies. Like, in yes, case they you do have that. Okay. Yes. So, uh, long and the short of it, uh, give you just a kind of a quick update in case you had, didn't have a chance to scan it all that much. We, we did open the bids. We only had one bid. I figured we might have one or two. It's always a roll of the dice when you go in. Um, it's a pretty small pool of candidate contractors for this type of work. So, that's always a challenge. Um, Bottom line is that the dollar doesn't stretch nearly as far as it did when this project budget was conceived five years ago, <laughs> pre-COVID. So I feel like a broken record in these forums with all of our clients where a lot of tough conversations, the, the long and the short of it is we can move forward and we have a plan to move forward. I would describe it kind of as a, a, a two-piece approach. So the first half of the approach is we're here this evening to have the board consider um, authorizing Marlene and, and Phil and Eric and Ken and I to award the project for the base bid amount. And that is within the project appropriation. That leaves a pretty skinny 5.1% project contingency going into construction, which, you know, I'm an engineer. I'd, I'd want, I generally like to have 10, 15 is even better. Five is doable. Um, but probably I'm sweating it a little bit going in because we haven't put a shovel in the ground. What's the amount for 5%? Uh, the amount for 5% is about 600000 if I recall. 500000 480000 $480,000. So that's, that's the first piece. I'll pause there. Yeah. Okay. Um, this um, this uh, company that bid... You have experience working yep. with them? WM Schultz, they're they're out of, uh, they're just north of Albany. Um, I've personally worked with them in Great Barrington and Lenox on projects in the past several years. Um, they're certainly qualified. They have all their DCAM certificates uh, that are required um, to bid a project like this. Their references check out. I believe they're financially stable, et cetera. So um, they just were awarded a project that we're working on in Hardwick. So I think this one was uh, was appealing to them to have a couple along the route here to make the uh, the commute worthwhile. Yeah. On these projects, what might be unknown that you're going to come? I know. I know yeah. I've I've worked with projects too, oh, so you, there's you always some here. unknown things. So I would categorize them as kind of two or three categories. I think the biggest one is we're we're providing a a, a major electrical overhaul, and anytime you get into taking apart panels and looking at wires and conduits that are 
it's just kind of a Swiss cheese of uh, of infrastructure. There's always electrical change orders, you know, related to getting loose grounds out and things like there's just always stuff related to that. The second piece would be anytime we're doing work underground, we think we know exactly where things are. And sometimes you have to make adjustments on the fly. Sometimes those adjustments, you know, result in changes uh, to the original concept. But um, I would say those are probably the two biggest ones. I don't know if yeah, Eric's mean, lived yeah. there for too many years, so he, yeah. he probably knows where, where everything's hidden. But uh, And actually, I'd like you also to, to discuss on the alternatives that you're hoping for, yep. why they're important to do them now yep. instead of waiting uh, a few years down the road. I think yep. that's important on, on the money part side. I said, yeah, appreciate the steering there. Um, so you may recall when we met last time, we talked about structure in the bid form where it had a base bid and then several additive alternates. We anticipated that we might be in this position today where we don't have enough money to do everything. So. Fortunately, the base bid is within the contingency and the appropriation and we can move forward. The first few alternates, and we had five in total. So after the base bid, the first two alternates, 1A and 1B, were related to upgrading the existing clarifiers. The clarifiers are, for lack of a better term, equivalent to like a heart or lung. Like they're, they're pretty central to life at the treatment plant. Um, I could turn the other way and Eric could probably nod his head, but if we didn't get those pieces of infrastructure done, I think we'd all be pretty disappointed. I think that when I was here, Diana, when you came down to the plant, I believe I showed you a bunch of pictures of inside the clarifier, how rusted and corroded all the metal is in there. So I think that was, I mean, and that was two and a half years ago. So that was a while ago. Get any better. So, yeah. So those are the first two. Um, the second one, uh, alternate two, relates to converting the existing gaseous chlorine system into sodium hypochlorite. Um, just really comes down to like safety issues for the operators, et cetera. Gaseous chlorine is, you give Eric and Ken anything, they'll make it work. But I think we'd all rather have them have something that's that's safer to use, especially with a limited crew of two on most days. So. Those three things. So in anticipation of this evening, um, we spoke with WM Schultz and said, would you guys be willing to hold your pricing on alternates 1A, 1B, and 2? Because they did give us good pricing for those for 90 days. I said, we need some time. I can't go to the select board and expect them to say, yeah, we'll be able to do that. We're going to ultimately hopefully be able to award the base bid. And in parallel with that, part two is consider whether the town and the residents want to put uh, you know, an article on the town meeting uh, that's upcoming. And we figured that that 90 day window would allow us enough flexibility to at least go through the process. Um, they only had to hold their bid for 30 days and I thought it was pretty gracious of them to do it for 90. So those three additives yep. come up to almost a million dollars. They do, yep. It's a... Uh, so there, there's no, though none of that can be covered in the amount that was already. No, that's fair. So like the the pricing that they had was roughly just ballpark three hundred fifty thousand, three hundred fifty thousand, one hundred seventy five thousand. So the sum of those three is a little less than a million bucks, but ballpark. Um, we have a half a million dollars in contingency. So as an example, what we did in Deerfield is you have a twenty four month schedule. Each month as you move along. My confidence, our confidence grows in terms of what we'll experience for change orders. We like get our arms around that. And hopefully the shift is from dealing with change orders associated with unknown conditions to dealing with change orders that we ask for. Hey, since we have this money left, can we put it towards this? It's possible that we would have contingency to maybe do part of alternate 1A or 1B. Um, but right now looking into that, I but I mean, the initial part of your conversation was that that small of a contingency makes you nervous. So yeah. we shouldn't. No, I mean, in, in an ideal world, and I on, on page two of the memo, I said, you know, if we held enough money for the three alternates, one A, one B, and two, and bumped our contingency back up to ten percent of the base bid price, um, you know, that's about one point four million dollars. So the contemplation for the select board is, if we do move forward with the award of the base bid this evening. Um, do we structure some form of an ask because that is money above and beyond the original appropriation? Okay, so the original, there's no room in the original appropriation. The, the amount we went. I'm uncomfortable spending it today. How about that? 
at 5%, it's pretty, it's like if you're building a house or something along the way, you're going to want to find out you want. So yeah. the bid and the contingent adds up to basically. The sum of those two is the money that. I thought it was $12 million. We have $12 million for um, construction, contingency, engineering, legal, bond council. Um, okay, so admin. the engineering. There's, okay. there's soft costs beyond the what would that be like 10 million so yeah there's there's about 2 million in, in soft costs on the project okay. so i just want to get this right right now with the three alternatives yep you're looking at reducing contingency to five percent off of the base bid or is that for the whole project no right now if we don't do any of the alternatives alternates i should say we'd go into a $9.3 million award base bid and we'd have a 5% contingency, half a million bucks to work within moving forward. If in parallel, if you choose to award the project for the base bid after tonight, the parallel pack track would be, do we want to put together an article for consideration at town meeting for the supplemental costs for the three alternates and the extra contingency. That's really the question. <coughs> so we'd have to find a million dollars. We'd have to find somewhere between one and 1. 1.4. Yeah, because so I tried to give you a high. Here. You have 1,399,570, so 1.4, 1. 1. 4. Yeah. 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 And that that's those three items added up plus the contingency yeah. for those All items. 1A, 1B, two, an extra contingency. Okay. An extra contingency would be, you know, if we needed to split the difference and say we can live with seven or eight percent instead of five versus 10, that, you know. So Marlene, what would we have for funding source options? I mean, we, we don't have any, right? Unless we ask for no. another override. Yeah. We don't have any, yeah. any what's our source? borrowing capacity? Um, well, I wish the treasurer was here. Um, I, I, I can't say what our borrowing capacity is. I don't know. So in turn, that's the revenue side on the debt service side. We can certainly apply for a supplemental loan from USDA. Would they, uh, that was my next question. USDA, would they, uh, guarantee a supplemental loan? I'm confident that we can get the, that 1.4 million in the form of loan, I highly doubt that we're going to get a loan grant split for that supplemental project right, okay. based on other projects that we worked on. And okay. I think Hatfield and Deerfield are similar communities and stuff. And I, and that was the, we'll ask, we'll try, but I, I would go into it assuming that, um, you know, you're looking at a debt service on 1.4 million would be about, 55,000 a year, some, somewhere in that ballpark. That would be the extra mortgage payment. I mean, on that, the other hand, if you look at 3.5% increase every year, it's been five years, you're talking almost 15, 16, 17% increases in the last five years. That'd be like over 2 million. So this, this being at 1.4 million yeah. isn't really, should be unexpected because it's been five years it's been since brutal. the pricing. Last year, things finally came back to just under 10% construction inflation, but the two previous years, it was between 15 and 20. That that absolutely it, crushed it, us. Phil, if we did, if we were able to get a you know, an additional USDA loan, which of course the terms are really good for those, would that fit roughly 55,000? Could that could that be paid out of um, like water sewer enterprise? Is there capacity in those lines for that? I mean, it would be, I'm gonna speak on your behalf here, maybe the bad guy. I was thinking, go ahead. <laughs> it, would, it would obviously result in, a, in, a, in an increase to the sewer rates to accommodate that. I don't remember what the budget, what the total budget was off the top of my head. Yeah, there's not too many projects, yeah. water sewer projects that we are funding right. from, from. Hatfield's historically sewer. had like a pretty yeah. generous contribution from the general fund for for capital. But so we would have so, to, sorry, go ahead. So I guess one question would be what's coming off? Is there anything coming off? Well, we did have a couple projects go off. Um, the rotating biological one um, has gone off and there was something else that went off. Um, is it? Yeah. 
So it, the second part of this formula is complicated. There's moving parts, right? And there's some things that we can't answer in this group, but I think the 90 days affords us an opportunity to move forward. And get to town meeting. Yeah, the silver lining here is that we got, okay, we got one bid. Granted, it's from a contractor we know that we're comfortable with. It's more than we wanted. In the past, there's been times where we've thrown out bids and rebid. I can tell you in every one of those cases, the result has either been fewer bids after that or and higher prices. And here, my concern is with one bid, we have a fish on the line. They've got skin in the game. They're willing to you know, extend things and work with you. And I, I think if we needed to go beyond that 90 days, if we were really close, I think they probably would. I mean, um, would USDA be able to provide us information by town meeting? Yeah, so if we if we wanted to pursue parallel track two, I would need some sort of a nod of the heads from the town to submit that supplemental loan application on the town's behalf. So Marlene and Phil would help me put that paperwork together. We would get that in and we would get um, we would get like those gray terms. They never give you a loan commitment until you have an appropriation. So it's like the cart before the horse. But I can tell you, you but know, they've been a good agency to work they're with good. and they're pretty yeah. steady and reliable. I mean, right now, intermediate loan rates two point two point six percent for forty years. It's still like really good rate. So then, from our end, we would need to get an article approving these expenditures at town meeting, yeah. and then with find a out a funding source, and that would depend on our borrowing capacity. That right. would be an a the treasurer would be able to let us know right. that. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it seems like hopefully we would have 55,000 in borrowing capacity per year. Yeah, we may be able to do that. And that debt doesn't hit you until likely FY 20, yeah. might even be 27. Right? Oh, okay. Because the way USDA works is you, you yeah. spend so. the money, close your loan. So oh, we've got to get okay. through we got a 20% grant. So oh, we've so got to get through eight million, we've got to get through 8 million yeah. bucks. You know, in other words, mm -hmm. yeah. it's even more likely we would have the capacity. Mm -hmm. Or if you decided we're going to put a hundred percent of that cost on the user fees, we, we have two, two cycles to get the rates to where they would need to be in theory. And I mean, I think we'd need to make sure that we're able to, you know, sort of demonstrate that these are critical additions to this very large project, right? Like we're taking the project you know, whatever, 90% of the way, and hopefully we would invest that extra money to... Because it doesn't make sense to build a house and not have the windows put in. I mean, <laughs> basically, that's what you're saying. You, we would build I this think... plant without some stuff, and it's it doesn't make sense. You know, the ongoing frustration, and it's got to be for all municipalities everywhere, is the length of time it takes to put these projects together mm you know, get the engineering done, get everything bid. And then you're, we're, you know, because of just how everything works these days, you know, it's harder to find people to bid, right? We're not having a lot of people banging down our doors. I don't care what it is we're putting out to bid. Um, yeah. And then the costs are always so much higher. Like we have to, I don't know, I mean, we're not going to be doing any more big projects anytime soon, oh, but we have to be, be, be that, that should be part of the. They used to give us five years from the date of the letter of conditions, the loan commitment to fully execute the project. And that was fine for a long time. They want them done in three years now. But the reality is, is that, you know, even a year for planning and design and permitting is pretty tight and two years from construction. We used to be able to build this project that we're talking about in 12 months and it's going to take 24 right now because many of the components won't arrive for 50 to 80 weeks after their approved shop drawings. So like the electrical switch gear and stuff, I mean, Eric can attest, like we wait for these things for a long time, the generator, it's, um, well, and the, that that's, that that's, hurts, yeah. that's an addition, but I'm saying from the time that you, engineer it and and you you know we had to get our, our finances in order mm -hmm. and then it goes to bid everything has gone crazy price wise yeah. mm -hmm. so we keep Check finding ourselves in knows, these problems yeah. for, with no yeah. fault of our own yeah. so this one could the base bid is higher than i wanted 
as we as we talk about the price for those three alternates is a very good price so we had our you know engineers opinion of probable cost we had hoped that the base bid would have been a million dollars lower than it was so it all been but our million. quote you know estimate if you will for the three alternates was higher than they had for each of those three items so they may have just made a business decision to front load some of those costs they likely knew that they were the only bidder on bid day i mean these things yeah there's a lot of things we can't control but. Right. So right now from us, you just need us to move with the base bid. Yeah. Give you permission to, to contact USDA for a supplemental loan. Yep. And then we need to work on putting something together for possibly town meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we need to figure out funding sources. So, it would be nice oh, to this know when, when okay, those payments would hit so we know about <laughs> yeah. our bet. It would. Our borrowing. Yep. Yeah. I know that. Okay. okay so do you need a motion to... To accept the base, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the, the base bid as presented by Mr. Pickett. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? Uh, All those in favor? Uh, Aye. I'll make a motion to have Mr. Pickett pursue USD, uh, at USDA supplemental funding to see if we can get them to help us with this project. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We should add that potential debt. I mean, it wouldn't hit this coming year. No, we can cycle out what that looks like for you with when the debt would hit. We can right. ballpark it within like a three-month window. Okay. And then we can give you the two options. Either you put it on the general fund, it means this. You put it on the user fee, it means this. Or you split it. I think last time we gave you a same kind of like right. formula where we it. Yeah. had A and B and then we had a hybrid, right? Where we kind of just did a 50-50 or a 75-25 okay. thing. It's yeah, pretty linear. If we, if we do have an article on town meeting, I mean, we have to have a funding mechanism. Oh, yes. Agreed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to add that to the list of things we talked to the finance committee about. Mm -hmm. But I think your, you know, your head, your point is... A good one about doing the project, you know, doing the key components mm -hmm. of this project. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. so just to be clear, if it was the one point four supplement, mm -hmm. it's going to be fifty five thousand a year. I'm saying ballpark forty grand per million financed is a route about what USDA terms are, and in my little brain here, you know, I'm trying to split the math of one point four. So maybe it's closer to 60, but it's somewhere in that ballpark, you know, the, the mortgage print. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's not the answer we wanted, but it's the reality of what we're going to contemplate now based on what we discussed this evening. So, you know, we'll take it one day at a time and provide the information that we can to the voters <clears throat> and, and see what happens. Yeah. I just put I just put that out there because if you wait. Oh, I know. It's the cost gonna of that is going to It's just going to get more. The 1.4 is going to be over. And while we have a contractor there right. it, working in the system and doing it all, yeah. it totally makes sense. The yeah. wacky thing right now is with all this inflation, the only thing that has value is the debt. It's crazy because the dollar is not, dollar's not worth a dollar, you know, 180 days after you did it. But the debt has value because it's fixed uh, yesterday's term. So. Uh. I would, in the meantime, encourage my colleagues to go take a tour up there if you haven't, because it, it was very informative. Absolutely. Oh, we're taking the Cub Scouts there. You are? We, we took years ago. We oh, took yeah. the Cub Scouts there to uh, <laughs> tour that. It's pretty pretty cool uh, operation. We, yeah, we just have Northfield after school kids come down when I work there. Deerfield Academy goes down to our plant down there, and they bring a couple groups a year down through there. So it's it's good to let the public come in and see. Yeah, I was, what we talked about that, here. that people, you know, getting Absolutely. people having a chance to see what really goes on there. I'm just really worried about the clarifiers and stuff because if it's if they something goes wrong with those, it's going to cost a heck of a lot more than what this little bit of right contingency that they want to put on the right i mean it's and that's shuts you down it does seem prudent to do it now while the, all the work is being done we might be able to get this um extra you know usda supplemental loan and yep. the terms are pretty good so let's explore it actually let's on the other hand it. i think you guys been pretty good at staying at some of the pricing for the last five years you've been able to come in 
sort of close on some of the stuff and after five years. And don't forget that you've got, you know, three generations of operators that have squeezed everything that they can out of that with a lot of pride. Right. I mean, that's a vintage automobile down there. <laughs> and it, <laughs> but it doesn't always show like it. They take really good care of it. And again, Eric's and Ken are like, you know, the third generation operators that I've worked with. So everybody's pushed that thing about as far as you can. Well, it's it's really impressive, but it's interesting. It, it's it's old. It's eye opening. It is eye opening. It's it's old. It is not um, state of the art, right? It's one of. But the, it's working. Yeah, it's one of the most simplistic systems, and that's probably what's made it last so long. Right. So if it would have been more complicated, you would have had this meeting probably 10, 15 years well, ago. Well, it's far has it's far exceeded its normal use useful life. Absolutely. Um, and this, of course, will uh, is a real investment in making sure that it continues to, you know, function safely. Another thirty or forty hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, I appreciate Eric all the input you've had on this over the years. Yeah. And you'll you'll work up there. Um, okay. Anything else on that? Dave's going to discuss the the uh, grants oh, for the stormwater. Oh yeah, right. right, right. Wastewater, water. I think on. Are you good on this front? They, they, yeah. I, think we're ahead, set, yep. I was just going to say they they have the board has the copies one page of cut those for each, for of the each three. one. Okay, yes, they do have. Okay, I did print out just an excerpt from the uh, intended. The, the say, final yeah, the final IUP. Yeah, yeah, but um, I I didn't know if you were going to refer to those. Well, at all. I can kind of just big picture terms. I think we talked a little bit about it, different staff, et cetera, but the, the state um, SDP has this, you know, state revolving fund, which has been around forever to help with construction projects. It wasn't a great fit for the treatment plant because it's a 20 year note at 2%. And obviously that meant a much higher mortgage payment for us. Um, but they just started this asset management planning grant component, which is pretty cool because not only do they provide money, but it comes in the form of grant. So um, we submitted three applications uh, on behalf of Hatfield. Do you want to jump in? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, one for sewer, one for water, one for stormwater. So asset management basically, certainly like on the sewer side, allows us to build on what we had done through the two-phase II study um, in terms of um, – identifying, quantifying, determining the condition of existing infrastructure. And for each of these three categories, you put up a small amount of cash and you turn that cash into a grant from DEP. And a third category for all three of them is, um, they call it in-kind services. So it's the, the, the time associated with each of the, the departments and their staff um, helping with the project, gathering files, assisting with locating infrastructure, um, being out there for, for some of the evaluation, but um, that's just kind of a general overview. I can get into specifics for each of the three or. What do you end up with questions? at the end of it? At the end of it, you end up with, uh, well, for, for sewer, it's great because that, that, that yields like what they call like a CMOM plan. And CMOM is something that Eric has to do. Eric and Ken have to do in their permit. It's a permit requirement. Um, we developed recommendations for this probably four, four years ago ish. And we kind of sat on it because of the priority of what we need to do at the treatment plant. And lo and behold, this opportunity came along for you to do what you said you needed to do. The DEP requires you to do. And now you do it for a small amount of, you know, cash from the from the uh, enterprise fund. And, you, you know, you get a, a significant, generous supplemental grant from SDP. In the last, three. yeah, in the last DEP inspection, they actually mentioned the CMOM when we were going to put it into effect, and so they they're on top of asking about it. So, so you're, again, I just still don't really understand what we get at the end of it. Just reports. It's a get, yeah. Oh, it's a plan. It's a planning project. Yes. Okay. So you're going to have a report. Um, every pipe, every manhole becomes an asset. The condition of those assets are evaluated on the field. It develop you develop a prioritized basically capital plan and and, and need based plan for all of your infrastructure. Outside of sewer on water is in pretty good shape. Stormwater actually, we're probably quite far behind on that. As an MS4 community, we're required to do several things relative to mapping and outfalls and condition assessment and 
we haven't had an opportunity to do that because it's not a funded utility. It's it's another unfunded mandate on the general fund. So same thing on stormwater. And so all we need to contribute is the in kind. All you need to contribute is the cash portion. So there's three categories. Okay. Mm -hmm. They allow for up to $150,000 grant for each application to the town of Hatfield. That's like a 60-40 split where the other 40% has to come from a combination of cash and in-kind services. Mm -hmm. The cash is black and white. That's money that Hatfield has to put up uh, from the enterprise fund or the general fund or however they want to fund it. And then you get the grant. The third category of in-kind services is a little is a little more wishy-washy. We're taking credit for time that each of the three departments spends on those assets already. So there isn't like a, there's not a requirement to add new staff. There's not a requirement to, you know, um, add new costs that don't exist in what you've already budgeted. It's just a matter of <coughs> taking credit for those. And it's a, it's a month to month. You don't have to play banker like the USDA and this one, each month as things go on, you, we submit a reimbursement application. There's three columns, cash, you know, uh, grant and in-kind services, and they reimburse you within 30 days. So you wait no, till you for, get the money. For the townspeople, we'll just take one at a time. Sure. I mean, there's there's three grants. One is for sewer yep. mm -hmm. uh, asset. There's stormwater asset yep. and drinking water asset. So under what I'm looking at, table one under sewer asset man management, our the town contribution would be twenty eight thousand six hundred ninety four dollars and fifty three cents. Correct. And that would provide you an asset management program allowance for pre CCTV cleaning of pipes and locating of structures, uh, uh, CCTV inspection, advanced manhole inspections, updated asset management database, some report and traffic control allowance by town. So yep. if I got that correct. You did a much better job than I did, Ed. Thanks. Well, well I mean, I just <laughs> want to break it down so the people at home know yep. what we're it's much more coherent. What we're looking at. Yep. So that's under the first one. Yep. Correct. So under the second one. I just add on that one, you put up twenty nine grand, you get one hundred thirty six thousand in cash. Correct. And the, okay. the, the mass grant would be one hundred and thirty five thousand. Eight hundred and forty-two dollars and fifty-nine cents. So for our investment of twenty-eight thousand, we're actually getting a job worth one hundred and sixty-four thousand five hundred thirty-seven dollars and twelve cents on the first one. Yeah, it's about a five-to-one ratio. Yeah. Yep. So on the next one, on the stormwater management, I'm not going to read them all off, but there's there's like twenty-five things for stormwater. Uh, looking at our stormwater field evaluations, development ranking, summarize. But on that one, the town would only be uh, paying $27,836.80. And the mass contribution would be 136658 So the total cost of that would be 164000 for just a minor investment, right? Yep. And on the last one is the drinking water asset management plan, which is another uh, item of reviewing uh, existing mapping, identification, supplemental GPS coordinates, and, and develop a water financial model. But on that one, under this grant, we would only we would pay $24,636.01, and the state would kick in 102000 So that would be worth for our 24,000 investment would be worth $127,408. So out of these three projects, the total cost, I don't know about what the total cost would be, but the town the town cost is only about what, 30, 60? The town cash is about 80 grand. Yeah. Right. yeah. But they're not really, they're, these aren't projects, they're plans. These are not construction projects. Right, so, so they're, I just want, I don't yeah. want people to misunderstand that we're getting projects done it's uh, a lot of this stuff is out of sight out of mind below ground etc um to add on to ed's comments the sewer and the stormwater projects planning projects those are regulatory mandated projects um for each of those it would not if you chose not to do it now as part of this grant project you'd likely for each of those be required to do it at some later date without grant funds 
I was the water, gonna, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was going to suggest because we have certified water and sewer retained earnings that we fund those plans from retained earnings. That's okay. what most clients are doing. It makes sense. Okay. It's a it's on your budget renewing capital you for an existing you already plugged it in. Okay. Utility. So of the, of these three, what would be we what was the total for the total of the three that the town yeah. cost that would we would be funding out of like the, he just said it's about eighty yeah. It's about eighty grand. It, I, eighty I would grand. Assume okay. the stormwater yeah, eighty one thousand okay. one sixty seven. Stormwater would probably be the only one that would have to be considered through the general fund because I don't believe you have an enterprise fund for stormwater yet, right? Right. No. right. But we could use ARPA for that, for that, for those plans, for the stormwater one. Oh, for the storm. Oh, we could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Mass DEP is pretty lenient with how there's not as much red tape tied to these planning projects as there is for construction. So the benefit of doing it is just for for townspeople. Yep. The benefit of doing these three is? Well, for sewer, we have to. It's a, it's in your permit. It's in your NIPTES per wastewater permit for the plant. Um, stormwater as well. Stormwater, storm water, it's in your MS4 permit. Well, you know, water, admittedly, if you're further along there, I do believe that those regular re regulatory requirements emerge sooner, and Tony has started to address some of those over the last few years. Because I believe the state's been coming down on communities to have stormwater regulations in place. The bubble just shifts. We point at the treatment plants and the pump stations, and then the regulators shift it to we're worried about the pipes. But the reality is you've got an asset under the ground for each of these three utilities that's worth tens of millions of dollars. If you were to construct your sewer system today, you're probably looking at $30 million at least. I mean, anyone who's done excavation in Hatfield understands how challenging that is because what exists in the form of groundwater out there in the soils, if the, these pipes aren't attended to on a more regular basis, they leak and they cause a lot of water to come into the plant that Ken has to treat. And you know that adds cost in the terms of pumping and everything else. So one, it's required. Two, it's an asset you don't wanna let depreciate to zero because I don't wanna have that conversation about replacing a $30 million asset 10 years down the road or something that would be that would be devastating. So it just evaluates. It's just evaluating what we have, yeah. right? Okay. I just, I just don't want people to think that they're getting projects done for this. No construction whatsoever. And then, if we don't do it, you partially answered that. We'll have to do it at some point when there might not be grant funds available. And I had questioned yeah. why, why weren't they on the capital plan? But to your point, they're not construction projects. They're, they're not construction, and this grant opportunity was new last August, and. The immediate question was, oh, wow, there's stuff we have to do. Let's throw our hat into the ring and see what sticks. And you got all three of them. They were planning projects, not a construction project. But yeah. I can understand what you're saying so by like using the word project. Yeah. Right. That's, people that's a get better the term. wrong, yeah. Yeah. wrong yeah. idea. So, yeah. so. I, I just want project to, off and just leave it. Yeah. Plain. So two of them could be funded through retained water and sewer retained water earnings. and sewer retained earnings, and then and the and then we would have to just fund the um, the stormwater one, which is stormwater is about twenty eight thousand twenty eight thousand, and that would just be another funding source like free cash or um, or ARPA. ARPA, right? Which we have to use our ARPA funds mm -hmm. up anyway, so. Okay. So, so it's basically like a master plan for each one of those. Mm, right. That's, That's the way I was looking at it. That's yeah. what it basically is. Okay. So do you want well, to Well, thanks for... A, you you, you all come up with better ways of saying it than I do anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> do you want to put that into a motion? I mean, we would move to... What are, what are you asking us to do? So in order to secure the, the funds commitment, we have to have an appropriation in place for the project. So even though it's not a capital project, we would still have to demonstrate that we have a source for the money that's been voted on. So the the um, the sewer and the water one would have to be a, an article on town meeting to get funds for those two. Correct. So it's to move the plans forward and um, and find the funding request sources. town meeting authorization. Okay. For. All right. So that would be my motion to move forward with these um, plans and in an effort to secure the grant funding, find funding sources um, through town meeting articles. Mm -hmm. And I'll second that. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay. Thanks wow. for your help and patience working no, through those. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. everything. Hopefully we'll come back with better keep news us next on time. Track. Yeah. 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 All right. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Phil, you're just gonna hang around. Okay, so you, thank you both. Eric, good to see you. Um, so we're, um, you're looking for us to um, authorize the sewer and water billing commitments? Correct. Um, so this is for commitment two, water and sewer. Um, the total water commitment is $338,133.87 and the total sewer commitment $348,382.18 for a total commitment of $686,516.05. And those bills are out. Yes. yes. Those are out. They uh, were issued and they're due on May 1st. So I'm just, we just need a vote, right? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve the sewer and water billing commitment number two for collection. You should state the total amount, please, in your motion. Total amount of six hundred eighty-six thousand five hundred sixteen and five cents. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Phil. Next, you have a um, new hire. Yes, so we we have a, a job opportunities for two heavy equipment operators, and we interviewed two people who applied. Uh, one pulled out; he took another job in a different community. So we have one that is willing to accept the position. We offered him the position. Uh, his name is Paul Chapin from Greenfield. And uh, I think he'll be a good fit to the department. And again, we are still looking for one. It's been a real task to try to find licensed operators. <clears throat> so in front of you, you have the new hire form. Okay. Great. Well, I'm glad you found somebody. Mm -hmm. Wish you luck with the other position. So I'll just take a motion on um, this hire. I'll take I'll make a motion that we approve hiring Paul Chapin full-time DPW hiring. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? All right. Um, I kind of like when we bring new employees in, so maybe once um, he's on board. We're going to bring him in today, but he had to go back to Florida for, for a engagement so well maybe at a future meeting yes, especially people will see them around town they you know so that would be great okay so then there's the proposed traffic study so the traffic study for this area is step one of determining the crosswalk safety mm -hmm. as well as speed so limits. just for people at home, this is at Hatfield Village. This is on Correct. Elm Street. Um, sort of as you're coming into town just after um, Cantina. Correct. Uh, a lot of people crossing there. So I go through that, um, you know, through that section at least once a day. Right. And it has a posted speed limit of 40 miles an hour as we speak today. Uh, so with it, you have the first initial step is to do a traffic study. This traffic study is no cost to the town. Right. So we are going to mm -hmm. ask the board to approve this and we'll do the traffic study. But in the meantime, to try to defer a little bit of the speed on that section, we're going to paint double solid yellow lines instead of having a passing lane okay. in that section once the weather is. It is. It's a fast section of the street and there are a lot of people walking, I think, there are. from Hatfield. They, they cross and then they use the, take advantage of the sidewalk on Elm right. Street. So we did There's install, we did install the pedestrian crossing uh, signals there, the mm -hmm. flashing signals. So it helps, but still, it's like you say, it's, it's a heavily traveled mm -hmm. straightaway. So yeah, people, people speed down there. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with it. I think it's probably mm -hmm. wise to... Take a look at that area. Plus, it's free. 
So <laughs> it's free. It's a actually, favorite price. According to this, it says that each community is allowed up to two free mm -hmm. traffic studies right. per fiscal year. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. We have another I talked spot. with a the gentleman, Amir, there at PVPC uh, yesterday. And um, there's also reference to, you know, some charges for to defray PZ, PVPC operating costs. So I didn't know if, you know, there were costs separate from, from doing the study that we would incur. And he said, no, he explained to me the two, you know, free um, traffic counts. If it was an intersection, four-way intersection, you, we'd, have to, we'd be on the hook for two of them. The other two would, yeah. would be at no cost. So he's just explaining to me how, how that works. It's a nice program they have, for sure. Do we have to vote to do it? Just if, if the board, I, I don't know that a vote, just if you acknowledge that the it board looks like my this. signature. Yeah, yeah. and just you it sign it. Yeah. The chair's signature, correct? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think it's good to look into it. Um, we want to make sure that that area is safe because there are a lot of, a lot more pedestrians there than there used to be. They're going to come back with, you know, as right. far as they're, once they do the traffic study, they might say that the speed limit's fine. They might not. You know, right. you, you, you know, don't get your hopes up that they're going to reduce the speed limit. Mm. You know, I think it's pretty hard to get a speed limit reduced. It is very hard. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks to um, it looks like Garrett did some of the work on this, yes, and thanks did. to you for that. So, okay, so that is signed and ready to Good. go. Thank you. Okay, Marlene, we've got to pick up so the pace here a little bit. Very quickly, um, I received a just request. need a few more minutes. Yep. I see, received a request from CESA, um, Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture. They're going to be uh, having a farm bike tour fundraiser. Um, they'd like to hold that in town, and that will be on Sunday, June 2nd between nine o'clock and a.m. And, and noon. Um, I have discussed with the fire chief and the police chief and they have no concerns about this. I have provided you with a copy of the projected route at this time. It could change. So my, my question is, I mean, I, I think that's great, but my, my question is, do the bikes all go at once or is this like a, you go at your own pace or at your own time. So in other words, are there going to be bikes going through town right, the whole time? I, oh. yeah, good questions. I don't know. I know there will be about, they anticipate 50 people participating. Um, I can find out if um, I know it'll be. I think it was last year we had a bike, some type of bike event, and I can't remember which one it was. And, um, you know, there were some traffic delays. Mm -hmm. Residents were not informed about it. I got a lot of feedback from people who had, you know, people going by their house or they got, mm -hmm. you know. We would put this on the website. And I also want to say that we will communicate with them that there's no permanent markings on the road. Either. Right. We, we definitely want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we can try to get word out mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. um, so get as much information as possible about how many you know, participants and make okay. sure that residents know. And then maybe put um, just a reminder on a future agenda that maybe during announcements, we remind people that um, mm -hmm. this is coming up. Something like that. It'll do a couple of posts on social media and however else we get our news out. Okay, we'll do that. But I mean, I think it's sounds like a nice event. All right. So we need a motion on this. Um, I will. It's not until um, June, so why don't I just bring this Get a back more up next next week and okay. and it, it should be just so townspeople know you've already checked police and fire chief. Neither of the chiefs have an objection to this, yeah. so that has been run by those two departments. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe well, that's they are visiting, um, you know, some Hatfield Farms in mm. the process of the event. And I, I, I love that idea. So that's great. 
Okay, is that all you have, Marlene? Yeah, that completes everything that I have. Okay, so that concludes the televised portion of the meeting. It correct? does.